So phantom read is a very common problem when it comes to database transactions. It specially occurs when your transaction isolation level is set to read committed. Now, uh, I have a very detailed video on the transaction isolation levels where I've explained all four of them with examples, right? So please refer to that when you'd want to dive deep into all four of them. Now here, what we'll do is I'll give you a brief about what read committed isolation level is, what phantom read problem is. We'll take a very practical example to see how it leads to inconsistency, right? And the way to solve it is change isolation level. That's the, that is also like, if, like, because this problem will occur. If you are using a particular transaction isolation level, phantom read will occur. So, which means if you would want to protect yourself from this problem, you would have to either change your isolation level or use different kind of locking mechanism. In any case, it is always recommend that if this is something that you cannot bear, change the isolation level that you are operating on, right? So let's jump into it. We'll have a very detailed example of understanding what phantom read problem is, right? Okay. So in order for us to understand, we'll go through a particular schema and mimic a situation over here. So let's say we have a social media website in which you have your users table, is your users table in which you have ID and name. You have post table in which you are storing all the posts made by a user in which you have your post ID one, two, three, four made by user ID one. And what you're doing is you are having a user stats table in which you are storing for this user made in all these many posts, right? So this is what we are starting with. Now, what we are doing is, and by the way, first of all, in real world use case, why do you need a table like this? So that you can very quickly render the profile of the user. Not every time you need to compute a total number of posts made by the user. Given that you have count already handy, you can just start rendering the profile of the user, right? So whenever, Given that we have architecture like this or flow or the schemas like this, whenever a user publishes a particular post, we need to do three things. First, we have to make an entry into the post table that, hey, a new post is published by a particular user. Second, you have to update the user stats table and do a count plus plus there, right? And third, just as a hypothetical situation, let's say whenever a user publishes the post in the response that you are getting, in the response that you are getting, you need to render all the posts made by that particular user. So you need to do a select star of all the posts made by a user and send it in the response. So now doing all this three in one transaction is essential. Otherwise you would have inconsistencies, right? So given that you do all this three in one transaction, if your transaction isolation level is set to read committed, there would come a problem of phantom reads, which I'll talk about in a couple of minutes. We'll first go through the actual schema. I'm mimicking this entire stuff. I'll walk you through the schema. We'll see where the problem lies and we'll see how, uh, and we'll understand why it happened and when it happens, right? Okay, so if I do describe tables, you can see, oh, describe tables, ISO levels, tables does not, oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> it's show tables, my bad. Okay, show tables in which you see post, uh, user stats and users with the exact scheme, same schema that we discussed. So if I just show you, uh, select start from users, you see one user, select star from post, you would see three posts over there and select star from user stats. You would see user ID one has three total posts, right? Now what we'll do is we'll first set, uh, we'll first, uh, now that we have our data set up, what we will do is we'll set the isolation level and then we'll mimic the part where a new post is getting published, right? And we have to do those three things in a transaction. Now what we'll see the, now we'll go in depth of understanding what random rate problem, how it occurs and what it leads to. Okay. So given that we have everything set, what I'll first do is I'll set my auto commit to zero. Even if you don't do that, it's okay, but it's safe to do it. Then we'll set the isolation level to read committed. So what we see over here is set session transaction isolation level read committed, which is what we would want because that's where this particular problem occurs. Just to confirm, we see the transaction isolation level indeed being changed to read committed, right? So we confirm all of this. So now what we we'll do is now assume that I have two different APIs are being called where this new post, like two posts are getting published by a user at the almost very same instant of time. And due to any reason, like maybe API call, maybe something, something, they're being happening, 
right now you can change a use case and you could see this happening at tons of other places so what we'll do is we'll mimic this very same thing and we will start a transaction so post getting published by one by one api call post getting published by another api call so two transactions getting initiated in my database nearly around the same time now what would happen so first user when we know that what we do when user is publishing the post what we are doing first is we are making an entry in the database so i'll do a copy uh, uh, i'll do an insert transaction one is inserting a post it just inserted a post over here so post id 4 user id 1 so four poses so you made one entry over here then what you would want to do is you would have to update the stats table now when we are doing we are updating the stats table such that we are firing a query this you update user stats set total post equal to output of select count id from post where user id equal to 1 so you are counting the number of post that a user has and you are setting in the user stats table that particular value so if i set it it says one row affected rows matched one changed to one so if i fire select star from user stats where user id equal to one we would get total post equal to four this is not yet committed but what we did is we changed the count in this transaction an entry in the post table is created count is getting updated there right so this is my transaction one up until now your transaction two has just begun we reached till this point now what we are doing is my train my transaction t2 let's say another post is getting published right two posts getting published for the same user at the same time so now hypothetically what we are doing is we are inserting a value five comma one I mean, in real world it would be auto increment but i am just mimicking it explicitly over here so insert into post values 5 comma 1 so transaction has begun there right so another post has come in i have updated this till this point now my insert into post has happened over here it says one row affected right so now here neither transaction one has committed up until now neither transaction two has committed up until now right but insertion has happened here user stats row has also been updated second transaction came in and it inserted a value nothing has been committed up until now now what would happen let's say your transaction t2 got a lot of things there and it basically did whatever it had to update and it did commit right as soon as it committed the value now see what happens it committed the value c o double m i t oh my bad it needs to be this commit transaction t2 committed so transaction t2 inserted a row in the table post and it committed because my transaction isolation level is read committed if i read over here select star from post where id or not id where user id is equal to one now because my transaction isolation level is read committed when i do this i would get five rows so what has happened is out of nowhere because other transaction entered the row here what i'm getting is i'm getting one phantom row that i've read so now when my api would respond it would respond with five rows but in the user stats table when i commit this my user stats table would have four this leads to inconsistency so what i'm sending in the response is five rows but in the back end the count is stored as four and eventually it would get fixed but you need to write that code per se but you see this problem that you are you are storing the count as four but you are returning five rows over here because one row out of nowhere just sprung up just came into existence which is what this phantom read problem is all about because while this transaction one was running your transaction two came and it inserted a few rows so when your transaction read those things again it got something new which didn't exist this leads to inconsistency this is where this is exactly what 
the phantom read problem is that because you are reading the committed value always always you are reading the committed value because your transaction isolation level is read committed it is possible for you to have this rank uh, this phantom read problem where new data new row just sprungs up out of nowhere in your transaction scope because you just said you just counted the this thing you got four which is what you are committing but what you are returning is actually five rows which is inconsistent data and over time this would not like you need to write code to ensure that your eventually your data becomes consistent but that's a different problem but here you see this phantom problem in action where what you are saving is four but what you are returning is five rows right so this is where the problem would be where when you're reading it you're sending five rows so in in the ui if you're rendering it you'll see five rows but at the top you'll see total post equal to four that's the bad user experience we're talking about that's the phantom rate problem we are talking about right and this is what phantom rate problem is so now how do you solve it ways to solve this phantom rate problem is locking reads second it's about changing the isolation level where you have this kind of correctness that you that's extremely essential for you then you don't set your isolation level to read committed you set it to repeatable read repeatable read does not lead to phantom reads at all you compromise on throughput a bit but it gives you those correctness those consistency the high consistency that you need right so these are the two ways to solve the phantom reads problem depending on storage engines that is that mysql postgres InnoDB, mysm whatnot they have different guarantees so whichever database you are using Go through the documentation and see how they address or how they recommend you to address the phantom read problem, right? But this is what I wanted to showcase that what phantom read problem is and how it can lead to inconsistency in user experience and in worst case data if you don't handle it well. So which is where before you tune your database and change some critical parameters like this, always understand how it could affect you or your business logic or your business, right? And yeah, this is what I wanted to cover. I hope you found it interesting i really hope you found it amusing the world of database is really interesting i would come up with more 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 videos on database engineering so stay tuned thank you so much for watching that's it for this one i'll see you in the next one thanks a lot